Well, let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. John chapter 20, um, Minister Vivian Anderson led us in the reading and the hearing of it. John 20, I will read verses 30 and 31 and then John 21 and I'll read verse 25. John 20 verses 30 and 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christos, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And that believing, you may have life in his name. And then John 21, 25. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And the whole church said, amen. Go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, both of our texts today, Uncle George introduces us to a Jesus that many of us, uh, Bill, are not familiar with. And believe that is uh, in both of these passages, John 20 and John 21, we are introduced to a Jesus that is busy. Now, now the reason why, the reason why Deacon Tashian, I say that is because I think it is important that we um, pop debunk some of the mythology that is around Jesus. Uh, I talked about this uh, last week, uh, just sort of parenthetically uh, where I was going in the message, and I talked about how I am mighty afraid that the Jesus that is being presented to our world is not the Jesus of Scripture. And so that there are many people, some of them well-meaning, many of them, I'm sure, well-intentioned, who have not just a false view of Jesus, but also an unrealistic, unhealthy, and here's the worst part, an un biblical view of Jesus. And, and so I think, I think that one of the things, one of my jobs uh, is to go around the country, stand in this pulpit and reintroduce the authentic Jesus to those who hear me preach. Uh, I, I think I need to stress John does it in John 20 and John 21. He introduces us to a busy Jesus. That, that contrary to what many may think or feel or surmise or suppose, Jesus was not some laid back contemplative recluse who was up in some mountain living a monastic lifestyle. But Jesus uh, was actively involved and engaged in life and in ministry. Uh, I, I'm going to say something else, so, so hang in there with me. Jesus was actively, busily engaged in life and ministry. I, I'm still waiting. Reason why is because a uh, deacon skeleton, if that's true, then Jesus identifies with us when we are busily engaged in life and ministry. Uh, sometimes we, you know, we we working hard, you know, especially around the Christmas season. Uh, some of you have been working since pre-Thanksgiving. Uh, Brother Larry and I were talking about his late dad, uh, Bishop Odell McCullum, and I went, I did a little bit of shopping yesterday after Mother Molly Marshall's funeral. I said, well, let me run, do a little bit of shopping. And while I was shopping, I thought to myself, I need Bishop McCullum. Because Bishop McCullum would call me and say, all right, let's go shopping. He'd do it in October. <laughs> 
November. He, be, he have us out there shopping October, November, and he'd have all his Christmas shopping done. And I thought to myself, I need Bishop Odell McCullum right now because if, if, if something don't change, y'all, Christmas Eve will find me <laughs> in line picking over leftovers. During this season, everybody's busy. Busily engaged in life and ministry. Everybody in this room, everyone online, you are busy with life. Here's the good news. You serve a Savior who identifies with you in the busyness of life and ministry. Get out of your mind this laid back Jesus up on a mountaintop with a halo over his head and a rainbow in the background and he's just doing monastic musing. Now John says Jesus was busy, engaged, like just like us. Why Hebrew writer says we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He knows what we go through because he's gone through it. John introduces us uh, and Trish and Sister Kelly to a busy Jesus. But I need to stop right there because even though, and this is so good, even though Jesus is busy, he is not hurried, harried, or harassed. I'll try one more time. Even though he's busy, let the whole church say busy. Let the online church type in busy. Even though Jesus is busy, you never see Jesus in a hurry, harassed, or harangued because of the busyness of his life. What a word that is to us. Mike, that's a word for you. That's a word for me. That's a word for everybody up in here. Because I don't know how y'all do it. I mean, you know, tis the season to be jolly. Oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And then y'all blowing your horn and flicking folk the finger. <laughs> don't laugh, daughter. I don't know how y'all doing that. I mean, here it is. It's the most joyous of all seasons. And y'all are grouchy and grumpy. Come on, y'all. Our Lord, will everybody say busy. But he wasn't harassed and harangued and hurried. Instead, he was poised and pointed and purposeful so that he could be productive. I want to ask you today, I want to ask you today, which one characterizes your life right now? Now, we're all busy. I, I've given you that. Everybody busy. But are you harangued and harassed and hurried and nasty? Are you poised, pointed, so that you can be productive? Jesus was busy. Tap a neighbor and say, he's talking about you. <laughs> Look back and give them comfort. Say, I think it's terrible that he brought you here to talk about you like this. <laughs> I feel so bad for you that he's exposing you. <laughs> now, what, 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 Smitty, which life? Now, I, now listen, I am not asking this Ivana to just, you know, fill up some space. I'm asking this, and I'm not just asking it of you. I See, when I preach, remember, before I hit you with the two by four, I hit myself with it in the preparation. So I've been asking myself, which one am I? We're all busy. Everybody say, we're all busy. But are we harried and hurried and harassed and harangued? Or are we poised and pointed and peaceful so that we can be productive? John introduces us to a busy Jesus. In fact, it's amazing in both John 20 and 21, he says, look, y'all, there are things Jesus did you have no idea about. 
Sister Betty Hopkins, he says, in fact, in, in John 21, you, you almost, I, I, I really, I want, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask John, I say, John, now, were you really a black preacher? Because you, you know, this is kind of hyperbolic. There are many other things. I can hear him hooping it. There are many other things Jesus did. If we wrote it, the world could, now that's a lot of stuff. The whole world couldn't contain all the books. There are many other things Jesus did. Lynette, John says, and we didn't write them down. I want you to get this. Are you getting a sense of how busy? Okay, think about it now. Come on. You, you keep a diary. You do a, a day planner on your iPad or your iPhone or somewhere. You have your calendar. But now, it, it, when you die, we could, we could fill three books with it maybe. <laughs> you know, we, we wrote in like 11 point. We could fill three books with it. John says, there are things Jesus did. If, if we wrote them, the world couldn't contain. Jesus was busier than all of us. I need y'all to say amen. Come on. And yet, watch this. And yet, watch this. John says, we didn't write everything he did. Oh, this is so pretty. We didn't write it all. I need y'all to get this, which is why I keep telling you, stop fighting with folk over stuff you don't know. Okay, here it is, Deacon Dowdy. Don't let folk drag you into one of these barbershop nail salon debates about whether Jesus did this or what. Listen, John said, child, listen, the, what, the stuff Jesus did that we didn't write could fill the whole world twice over. Here's what we did. I feel like preaching. We wrote just enough so that you would know who he is and that knowing who he is, you would believe on him. And by believing on him, you would have life in his name. So I don't need any armchair theologian to argue with. I don't need any of my brothers. I'm not going to call no names of these other religions argue with me about how, how, whether or not Jesus when he was nine did a miracle, whether or not when Jesus was 12 he did something to his brothers and walked on water and got mad at his sister and gave her two heads. I ain't gonna worry about all of that. The silliness we talk about and you get caught the child of, of my past, th just stop it. We have no idea everything Jesus did. But there's enough written in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that we can put our faith in him. <laughs> because we know who he is. These, am I doing all right on the third Sunday in Advent? These things are written that you may know that he is the Christ, and that in knowing you might believe. That's what this is for, beloved. This is written for our belief. About a hundred years ago, the late Dr. R. Harry Cleveland, that don't mean anything to you, but to my father-in-law and my wife, the late Dr. R. Harry Cleveland, he, he, his name was really Richard Cleveland, but you know how when you get older and you become a real preacher, you change your name. You start out Timothy Clark, and next thing you know, you're T.J. Clark or T. Joseph Clark. You know, you got to get deep. So when I met him, he was Richard Cleveland, and when he died, he was R. Harry Cleveland. But my buddy, Dr. R. Harry Cleveland, years ago, about 100 years ago, uh, Cleveland pastored for many, many years the 4th uh, Street Church of God in uh, Jacksonville where um, Dr. Sherman used to pastor. And, uh, and so Cleveland told me about an author I'd never heard of, I think he's British, uh, the late Dr. J. Sidlow Baxter. And he said, man, he said, Tim, you got to read Baxter, you got to read Baxter. I'd never heard of I knew Barclay, I knew McLaren, I knew Spurgeon. I I knew those guys. I never heard a J. Sidlow back. He said, you got to read Baxter, man. You ain't reading Baxter. You ain't reading Baxter. And I said, no, I ain't reading Baxter. He said, you got to read Baxter. So I went and got me some Baxter. Because <laughs> all Harry Cleveland said, acted like I was, you know, uninformed. Because <laughs> I didn't read Baxter. So I went and got me a couple of Baxters. 
And one of them it was a book, it's, I don't even think it's still in print, called His Part and Ours. And the argument of Dr. Baxter in the book is that in our salvific experience, stay with me, in our salvific experience, there is a part, a role that he plays, Jesus. But there's also a part, a role that we play. His part is he came, he was born, he lived, he died, he was buried, he rose so that we could be justified. Somebody holler, that's his part. My part is to believe what he did. Okay, y'all ain't helping me. He did his part. I, you, we must do our part. But now before you, hey Angie, before y'all get too excited about that, that's right, that's right, that's right. He got his part, I got my part. Before you get too excited about that, let me help you. Can I talk to the online folks? Kareem, can I tell y'all right, you and Clifford, can I tell you right now, don't get too excited about your part because even your part is by his grace. You have not chosen me, Jesus said, I've chosen you. Come on, talk to me. It is God that works in us, both the will and the to do of his good pleasure. Whatever we do in relationship to God is not of us, it's of him. <laughs> Kevin, y'all ain't gonna help me here. No, 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 his part, die for us. His part, suffer for us. His part, be crucified. Our part is to believe. That's what John says. John says, Lee, there are many other things Jesus did. Jesus did, a, in the words of my grandma, Jesus did a whole heap of stuff. Whole heap of stuff that, that, that Matthew didn't record it, Mark didn't record it, Luke didn't record it. John, it's not in the Bethian, it's not in the Lucan, it's not in the Mark, it's not in the Johannian account. John says, if, if, if we wrote everything he did, the world who could not contain the books. Can I have a moment? Because I'm, I'm looking in this room, this is a big room, and I'm thinking if we fill this room from top to bottom, east to west, north to south, that'd be a whole lot of books. I'm just looking in this room. And John said, if we wrote everything, okay, okay, are y'all still awake? Am I boring you? If we wrote everything he did, wait a minute, y'all, wait a minute, in three years. <laughs> Pastor Kelly, in three years, the world itself, Mom Erin, could not contain those books. But I've given you enough. I've given you enough so that you can believe. I want to look at that real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to cut across the field. I'm, 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 going, I'm not even going to preach. I got so much stuff here. I just skipped about four pages for your benefit. Because I could have preached on them, but y'all don't look like y'all could take much. So I just scrolled through four pages, so relax. Because the intro was as long as the sermon was supposed to be. Here it is. There are three questions I want to raise. I have three relevant questions I want to raise. Here's point one. What does it mean to believe? John says, um, I, I've written, what I've written, I've written, I haven't told it all. I, I'm thinking now of that old song that, it's why I love old songs. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Whew. If somebody said to me, uh, we don't have testimony service no more. I said, no. I said, too many of us. And they said, what they got to do anything? I said, well, if I let one go, that's an hour. <laughs> Because if you start telling what he's done for you since the pandemic, we're going to be here all day. Just one of us. So you got to live a testimony life. You got to let your holy life tell the gospel story. What, what does it mean to believe? Um, 
The definition in the dictionary of believe is to have faith in a person or thing, to entrust, to commit. Don't miss that, to entrust, to commit. It, it's, what, it's what Paul said in one of our hymn writers picked it up. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, I love this verse, that he is able to keep that which I have committed entrusted to him against that day. But I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that. Oh, that's that old song that I've committed unto him against that day. Kenny, to believe is to trust. It is, it is to commit. It is, it is not, okay, it is not just to trust, it is to entrust. Not I-N-E-N, trust. To entrust and in entrusting, commit. It, it, it is, it is, are y'all still awake? It is like a safe deposit box that you put valuable papers or possessions in. You lock it and walk out. Now watch this, you don't go back every five minutes looking in that box, is it still here? Is it still there? Did they break in? You watching the news, did they break in the bank? Did they get in my box? No, no, you entrusted it. You committed it. That's what it means to believe. These were written that you might believe. That you, can I say this, y'all won't get mad. Richard, I'm convinced a lot of folk in church don't believe. They haven't entrusted, committed their lives to God. No, you haven't entrusted it. You haven't really put it. Here's how I know, because you're too worried. And you're too fearful. And you're too anxious. Because if you trusted, you wouldn't be like that. I'm talking to church folk now. I ain't talking to the, I ain't talking to the heathen and the sinner. I'm talking to us and up in here. We're so anxious, we're so fretful, we're so nervous, we're so harried and hurried and harassed. We're not poised, we're not pointed, we don't have peace, so we're not accomplishing our purpose. Because we don't believe. These things were written that you might believe. What does it mean to believe? It means to entrust, to commit and then walk away. Let me ask you a question. What, what does that look like? I'm glad you asked. I have 13 minutes. Here it is. A, it means that we believe confidently. When it comes to believing in Christ, like believing in, the, in, 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 in your safety deposit box, it means you believe confidently. A. B, I'm going to hurry. It means we believe continually. Ooh, Jesus, have mercy. And it means, see, that we believe completely. It means I, I believe confidently. I know in whom I have believed. I'm confident. I'm persuaded Ooh, that he is able. I live, I live that way continually. Not just on good days. Oh, God, I'm going to get in trouble. Kevin, I'm get in trouble. Not just, not just when things are going my way. No, no. But when all hell is breaking loose, I still believe. <laughs> I done lost you now. I done Somebody holler, I still believe. When I can't see it, when it makes no sense, when it's dark as 10,000 midnights locked up in the cellar, I still believe. Can I get about 35 folk to just holler, I still believe? Can I get about 45 folk online, just type in, I still believe. I believe confidently. I am persuaded, but I also believe continually. No matter what's going on, I do not fear when storms are near my home. 
is on the rock. Y'all don't know nothing. I got it. Reverend Nancy and I going to sing it. Praise God, I live in Beulah land. My house will all the storms withstand. It is not built on sinking sand. My home is on the rock. <laughs> and because it's on the rock, I do not fear when howling storms are near. My home is on the rock. I believe Confidently, I believe continually. Wait a minute here. See, I believe completely. I don't believe, Deacon Tashian, there's anything that God cannot do. Shh. Nothing. I trust him. Someone holler completely. With my past, with my present, with my future, with yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and all the tomorrows of my life. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountains peak, on the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly father. Watches over me. He makes the roles. Huh. Object of his care. Guides the ego through the pathless ear. And surely he'll remember me. <laughs> My heavenly father watches over me. I believe him completely, continually, confidently. I know whatever happens, he will care for me. And his mighty hand will enable me to stand no matter. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I need to leave it a lonely land because I'm feeling a shout. No matter. And how many of us have been through things we could not have imagined three years ago, two years ago. We went through things, Kevin, we could never have imagined. But we discovered no matter what happens, loss of loved ones, loss of job, loss of health, no matter what happens, he will care. Bill, he'll care for me. And his mighty hand will enable me to stand no matter what happens to me. Well, here's the second part. I have 10 minutes. What are we to believe? John says, these things were written that you might believe. So we know what believe is. is to entrust, to commit, uh, to believe. So we, we got that. But then what are we to believe? Look what John says. That Jesus is the Christ. Greek word Christos the anointed one, the Messiah. That we are to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Christo, the anointed one, the Messiah. And Uncle George, let me say this, Deacon George R. Murray Sr. And I know this is not popular, sir, so on that front row, pray for me. When it comes to believing in Christ, beloved, we don't get to choose what we believe. I need, to, I need to say that, Ronnie. Ronnie, I need to say that because we're living in an age where there is a plethora of belief systems, you know, and well, as long as I believe, no, I'm sorry, baby. I love you. I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Love you. I love you. I love you. Hey, I love you. But you don't get to choose what you believe about Jesus. Long as I believe, no, 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 no. We don't get to believe that Jesus is a good man and that's good enough. Okay, y'all got quiet, y'all got, we, we don't get to believe he was a prophet and that's all we got to believe. We don't get to believe he was a moral leader and that, get, no, no, you and I, now you get to believe what you want to believe about the Buckeyes beating Georgia. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Why did I bring that up? You get to believe <laughs> the Buckeyes going to beat the SEC. You get to believe that. <laughs> yeah, when it happens, you get to believe it. But, but you don't get to believe what you want to believe about Jesus. 
John said, this is written that you might believe that Jesus is Christos, Jesus Christos. He is the son of God. Are you in the room with me? That he is the Christ. There's a, there's a, there's a system of beliefs. And I know, I know I'm getting y'all mad now because I, I, I ain't come here for all of that. And you insult my intelligence. I, I, no, I'm not. I'm trying to heighten your intelligence. Because, precious heart, may I say unto thee that even in a multiple choice test, only one answer is right. You don't get to say, well, that's my answer. I am right. No. It's A, B, C, D, E, or F. But only one of them's right. In a pantheon of would-be gods, ain't but one. In, in a pantheon of supposed savior, ain't but one. And you better pick the right one. Behind door number one, door number two, door number three. Only one door has the prize. What's the system of belief that you and I have to have? First of all, when we believe right, everyone say believe right, it opens to us the person of Jesus. Who he is, who he is, who he is, the, the person. Is that Crystal back there next to her dad? Hey, Crystal, I love you. I'm so glad to see you. I missed you. Crystal, it opens up the person. Jesus is more than a figment of imagination. Jesus is more than the conjuring up of mythology. It introduces me to the living, vibrant, life pulsating person of Jesus. His persona, his personhood, the person of Jesus. It also opens me, Pop, to the promises of Jesus. Oh my, what, and what promises they are. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my daddy's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare it, I'll come again. Receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Be of good cheer. This world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The promises of God. When I believe right, I, I, I am opened to the person of Jesus. I am open to the promises. Y'all know what the third one is. You've been hearing me preach long enough. You already wrote it down. And I'm open to the power of Jesus. His life in me. His life pulsating, vibrating in me. It's him living his life hell in through me. I live, yet not I. Paul, Galatians 2, 20. I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Y'all missed it. The life I'm living in the flesh, I'm living it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The dunamis, the dynamite of God in my life. When I believe right, not this spurious heretical teaching, that is proliferating throughout the public sector and in the pews of our churches, but a proper view of Jesus. That believing. <laughs> believing in who, in what? The person of Jesus, the promise of Jesus, and the power. Can I ask you real quick online in the room? Have you believed? No, do you really believe in his person? Do you believe in his promises? Do you believe in his power? Or is it just something you say until rubber hits the road, until a storm comes, until life turns? Are you living it every day, confidently, continually, completely? Well, here's the third thing. What happens when we believe? I'm trying to exegete this text. What happens when we believe? John said, 
and that believing, you have life in his name. Mm, life, life. Uh, dictionary, well, I'm sorry, life. Everybody say life. life. Greek dictionary. <laughs> the Greek dictionary says this word life is found in John 20 and 21. It's to live, wait a minute, to live. Then he, it's another word, Uncle George, to be lively. I thought that was hard. But then it said to be fully alive. And then, Pastor Kelly, I thought about you. And then it says to quicken. <laughs> now, you got to be Kojic to get that. Because <laughs> over in Kojic, grand old church of God in Christ, when the mothers got happy, they got a quick, quick, quick. <laughs> Child, child, they, they, they be, they be okay, you see, y'all didn't grow up like we grew up. They be talking to each other, how you feeling, baby? Oh, I'm good, mother. Mom Eddins, I'm good. I'm good. You got to watch Mom Eddins. You know, Mom Eddins be walking down the street coming from, from work, just a humming and a singing and shaking a little head. And then you stop and you start talking, how you feeling, baby? I'm good. I was good. Hey. you like, what? No. <laughs> just having a little conversation and get a quickness. And mother starts speaking in tongues right there on the corner of <laughs> Birdsall and Redfern Avenue. She starts speaking. She didn't care where she was. Listen, most of us pray we didn't run into them old saints at wall bombs. <laughs> wall bombs was a supermarket. We be praying, Lord, don't let me run into the saints now. Especially if I'm with a girl I like. Because you know, how you doing, son? Oh, oh praise the Lord. Here we go. <laughs> After interrogating the girl, who are you? Who are your people? <laughs> what church you go to? Worse than J. Edgar Hoover on steroids. Where you from? And then they get to talking and they get a quick. And then in aisle three, they speaking in tongues, knocking over the mayonnaise jar. Clean up in aisle three. Because <laughs> they didn't care. Wherever the Holy Ghost hit them, I wish I had some folk like that here. I don't know what kind of religion y'all got. Y'all got that religion like the girdles my grandma used to wear. My grandma put on a girdle. She put all that fat up in there and put it, tuck it in and put it in. And, uh, and it'd be holding it down. She couldn't breathe, but it'd be holding it down. She had to walk like this, but it'd be holding it down. And some of y'all got a Holy Ghost, y'all can girdle it down. But them old folk had a Holy Ghost, it bust out anyway. In the supermarket, on the bus, on the Long Island Railroad, on the number one subway, if they thought about the goodness of G okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. And everything he done for them, they start giving, I wish I had somebody, since you not deep enough to praise him at Walmart and you're not deep enough to praise him on your job since you're in the sanctuary would you go ahead for the first time this week and just give him some praise come on tap a neighbor say you're in a safe zone tell a neighbor you're in a safe place let everything that has breath I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go come on somebody holler I've got a reason to praise him when I look back where he brought me from and everything he's done, I've got a reason to give him a praise. That word life means to be lively, to be fully alive, to quicken. John chapter one says in him was life. John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly would you turn 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 to one of your neighbors and say neighbor I'm living my best life because I'm living a transferred life he transferred me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his own son I'm living a transformed life therefore if anyone be in Christ they are a new creation the old is passed away and behold 
everything becomes new. I'm not just living a transferred life. I'm not just living a transformed life, but I'm living a transfigured life. I have transfigured moments in my life. I have transfigured experiences in my life. I'm not what I used to be, but I'm also not what I'm gonna be because some glad morning when this life is over, I'm gonna fly away and we shall be changed. The mortal must put on immortality. The corruptible must put on incorruption and we shall, I feel like preaching, be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and we shall behold him and we shall see him as he is and we shall be made like him I've been transferred I've been transformed and I'm being transfigured and one of these days I'm going to drop this earthly and put on heavenly I'm going to drop this natural and put on supernatural. I'm going to drop the earthbound and put on the heavenly. I'm going to drop the terrestrial and put on the celestial. And I shall, good morning, y'all, be changed. Is there anybody here that can shout with me and tell a neighbor, neighbor, if you think I'm something now, just wait till we get over there. When I've been changed into who he wants me to be, if you're impressed with me now, catch me on the corner of Hallelujah Boulevard and Glory Avenue. When I walk down the golden streets, come to the throne, lay my trophy down and I take part in the heavenly anthem all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem what you gonna do Clark standing.